Can you tell us? Can I hear you? Level of communication. Yes. <laughs> somebody said, can I hear you? And somebody said, levels of communication. OK, can I hear you? Yeah. Yes. Do we agree that this is the correct? How many of us agree that this was the topic? <laughs> it's, it's the level of communication. Yes. Levels of communication. communication. And I hear you was on the topic, the levels of communication came on that. Level one, two, three, two, five or so. So how many levels of communication did he talk about or did we talk about yesterday? Five. Yes, Chris, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> five levels of communication. Good. Now I want to really know how many of us were really listening. What did he say was the first level? Come on, communication. Come on, communication. What does that mean? <laughs> like, how are you doing? Simple talk or so. OK. And your response, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Juliet. Uh, anybody else? OK. Sister so, Juliet, it seems you said everything. <laughs> to the third level. What was the third level? Guided release. Uh-huh. Well, somebody is really listening and somebody is making notes. <laughs> what is the meaning of that? Uh, oh, how do I explain that? <laughs> yes, like... Um, if you don't feel like doing something where you present it, mm -hmm. make it understood why you don't want to. Yes. Thank you, Sister, Sister Juliet. Anybody else wants to say something to that? Uh, um, Pastor, that was about giving opinions that would make um, your friend or your partner get to gaze or maybe give him a clear picture of what you could be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sister. Okay. Well, maybe we can scale back to level two. What was level two? General information and Facts? General information and facts. Can, can somebody tell us how it is different from level three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's different in that uh, in the, in the, sec in the uh, second one where you just give him information and and uh, you give news, you can say something like, we don't have salt. Mm -hmm. uh, I, am, I am going to the store. Mm -hmm. But then in, the, in terms of the, the, the third level of communication where your partner can offer or share his or her opinion and judgment, that is, for example, when you tell somebody, you see, the, I, I don't want to go to this party today. I was invited. Mm -hmm. in, this, in this case, the level of um, uh, communication is deeper than just uh, the second level. There is, you know, yeah, more sharing there. That's, that's good, Brother David. This is spot on. Thank you so much. Um, I can see Pastor Amwa is already on. What was the third, fourth level? Now he's listening, so we have to be careful what we say. <laughs> high, high tension. Pardon? High tension. High tension. Stroke high reward talks. High tension, stroke high reward talk. And what is the meaning of that? When they can no longer not connect properly. Mm -hmm. And the, the response gets a bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, um, 
Thank you, Sister Juliet. You, you've been really following this. So um, let's also re refresh our minds about the fifth level of communication. What was that? What was the fifth level? Truth in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is uh, total transparency. Total transparency. It, it, where you truthfully share your, your real you without mm -hmm. any fear. You can tell your partner exactly, you know, everything without being, you know, having any fear of any repercussion. You know, that's from yesterday's uh, message was the highest level, you know, that, yeah. Thank you, Brother David. Um, thank you so much. You and Sister Juliet, you have been very, very good students. Pastor Amwa, you know, those ones are listening really carefully. I, other people are listening, but... Um, <laughs> They are the ones who are giving the answers. So you heard them. Thank you so much. If I if I could, you know, give you chocolate on Zoom, I would have sent you one right by right. <laughs> you can be hoying us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good. Well, we are going to have the presentation right now. But before then, I'm going to ask Sister Ezina to bless us once again with a song. And then Pastor Amoa will come in and give us the presentation today. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Another privilege to be blessed once again through our pastor, and uh, I pray that we will also be blessed with the ministry of some. The chimes of time ring out the news. Another day is gone. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have longed for the strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I bring hope for you. It is no secret what God can do, what is done for others, he will do for you. With his arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Do you know there is no night? For in his light you never walk alone. Always feel at home wherever you may roam. There is no power can conquer you as God is on your side. Just take him at his promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, he will do for you. With his arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. It is no secret what God can do, what is done for others, he will do for you. Oh, it is a light of you. It is no secret what God can do. It is a sign of He'll pardon you. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Izine. That's very nice of you. God bless you. Pastor. Pastor Amwade. Oh, we seem to have lost. Oh, yeah, he's there. Yes, Pastor, you are on. I think he has a problem. It seems that it seems that it is not working on his side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll try and reach him and see what is happening. Um. While waiting, any yes, uh, he just sent me a message that he got disconnected. Um, um, it cannot connect. Okay, I will take him out, and then we'll get him to. Elder, can you? Can you stop his, um, because he's already on, he's not able to connect again. Can you take him off? And maybe, yes. Hello, Pastor. Hello, Pastor. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm very sorry, I apologize. Um, Pastor has been disconnected, he's trying to connect again and it's not working, uh, it's not reconnecting, but he's going to restart the whole computer and see if it's going to work. So um, maybe we can continue with our discussion. The, um, we were talking about the levels of communication and um, what else do you remember from yesterday that we haven't really mentioned this evening? Uh, Sister Juliet, if you are talking to us, your mic is off. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's not talking. Now we can hear you. Oh, it's off again. <laughs> okay, Pastor, I was just saying that um... For us to attain the fifth level of communication, then um, we really have to be friends. Yep. Yeah, and share more than maybe just someone you meet there in the streets or, or maybe a colleague at work would share with you. So mm -hmm. I learned that um, for us to communicate appropriately, we have to be friends. Okay. Yeah. And in the fifth level as well, he said we should encourage kindly thought and holy affection. Mm -hmm. Kindly thought and holy affection. Thank you so much, sister. Yes, um, sister Beryl, you raise your hand. Yeah. Um, I think it's nice when we don't have any secrets between us. Mm -hmm. I think when we are in that level, then we are able to just share anything and everything without any fear of being judged. 
Good, Mero, thank you so much. So did you talk about what prevents people from getting attaining the fifth level? Or if we didn't, what do you think would be uh, things that will stop us from reaching the fifth level? No, you can, you can, I don't think there's a right answer. You can say what you think, whatever you think would be the possible uh, hindrance or possible obstacles to reaching the highest level of communication. Keeping of secrets. Keeping of secrets. Can hinder us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sister Juliet. What else? I think anger can also hinder us from reaching there. You know, just like uh, we discovered yesterday that it could even mean um, your partner saying something that, you know, you are just surprised to hear. Instead of getting also angry or feeling disappointed, you come down and you talk about it. You, yeah. you address it. And after you finish addressing it, the person will even have more confidence to mm -hmm. confide in you and to even reveal more of him or herself to you yeah thank you thank you so much brother david that's very very nice good pastor amwa is here finally so um now whoa good we have pastor here this evening and um we are very happy to have you pastor over to you Your mic is off. Finishing, just when our dear sister was uh, finishing the music, um, I was trying to begin to share the screen. Next thing I got disconnected and tried a couple of times, wouldn't come back. So I, I swapped computers very quickly. <laughs> Um, they have to uh, transfer the file here, but um, God knows what is going on. What we are looking at today is the third party or friend in our relationship. And I will begin by saying that marriage as an institution has suffered from the Garden of Eden in many ways. It has gone through checkered situations and has suffered a lot, all because the devil wants to find a way to um, make what God instituted in the Garden of Eden a success. Uh, the devil doesn't want marriage to be a place, a, a, a small heaven on earth. And so he has attacked it from the beginning uh, over the ages, and it continues. And in our time, uh, many other things uh, continue to attack. And so this presentation really um, adds an, or brings it to our attention another, another thing that is encroaching on the territory of marriage or relationships, and that is very, very serious because it, it comes in a very subtle way without you even noticing it. And before you know it, it will be in the center of your relationship. And I pray that God will be with us as we reflect on this. Father God, again, we invite you to speak to our hearts and it's in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. You may have argued about this before. My wife or husband is always texting or on Facebook with a personal trainer. Now she locks the cell phone and has changed the online passwords. If I ask who he or she is talking to, he or she freaks out and says, I am being paranoid, jealous and controlling. It may not be happening in your relationship 
right now. And if it doesn't, praise God. But many people have been taken hostage. Their relationships have been taken hostage by the whole idea of social media. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, to put it simple, to put it simple, um, it is flirting on social media and how it can have a serious impact in your relationship. How about this one? My husband is constantly texting a female coworker. He says, oh, they're just friends and that they only talk about work, but he's always laughing and smiling when he's texting her. He's always calm and warm and happy and very exciting. I can see from his face. I don't know, maybe you're going through that too, but the bottom line is vast majority of infidelities, uh, as we see today, follow a similar pattern uh, to these, this one. They start with an opposite sex friendship that quickly becomes intense and emotional due to the false sense of intimacy involved with text messaging. They then escalate into a full-blown emotional or sexual affair. You know, when you begin to text somebody, it can, it can begin as a casual friend, like an acquaintance at work. Uh, you work with this individual, opposite sex, and then you exchange numbers and it begins as, oh, I don't understand this process on the computer. Um, can, you, can I call you at home this evening to walk me through? It may begin casually like that, but if you, your work, your place of work is in close proximity of this other person's. Before you know it, uh, you begin to talk about other things. Um, you, you receive a text message. Oh, you looked very nice today. Uh, what perfume were you wearing today? It, it was so, it, it was the smell, you smell so nice. Um, you are such a nice person, you are calm. Oh, your wife is a lucky woman. When these things are coming your way, don't look at them as innocent text messages. Because what they do is they begin to gradually work on your minds. And these days, you have many people using social media, Instagram, um, regular text messages, different apps that are uh, uh, for end, end to end encrypted that can really conceal your com conversation uh, from your husband or your wife and people are engaging using those apps to communicate with other people. And sometimes you go to bed and you go with your phone, you go to the bathroom with your phone, wherever you're going, you go with your phone, for sure. I need to also say here that cell phone has become a personal device. Um, it's because we do many other things with it. What the cell phone has become is that it has put together or brought together many other things that used to be separate. For instance, letter writing was separate. Remember the, the old days when we used to Right, our friends, air mails, go to the post office, you mail them. I don't remember, I don't know how many people still do those things. And then we used to have a separate camera. You have your, your camera that you use to take photos. Radio programs, TV programs. And now what the cell phone has done is that it has brought all these together and more. You have libraries on your cell phones. I can access my whole uh, Logos Bible Library right here on my fingertips. So it's just a matter of um, opening the app when I'm sitting at the airport waiting to catch a flight and then study. So it, it has many, many good things, but at the same time, it could be also used to engage in what we're talking about today. Uh, studies have shown that in, um, one in three divorces now start as online affairs. That's how serious it is. You start innocently thinking that there's nothing wrong with this. Um, it's a coworker, it's a trainer. I'm just helping this individual to accomplish something at work. We are, we are having a project. 
But then it moves beyond that to go to another level where you begin to complement each other in inappropriate ways. And if an individual is in a relationship where things are not as they should be, where he or she is not very happy in his or her relationship, this other person who is beginning to give him or her compliments. Oh, your husband must be nice. I like your smile. I wish I have somebody like that. That is sending you a message. So, and then before you know it, you are spending countless hours talking to this particular friend in front of a screen, as a screen and that can negatively affect you, your most important relationship. That is the one with your spouse. And so what you need to look at is danger signs, danger signs. What are the danger signs? Again, most affairs start out as friendship in quotation marks that cross the line. Before you know it, you are beginning to invest time. Investing in friendship with opposite sex at the expense of investing in your marriage. You always, you get to a place where you text each other so frequently. Either you use WhatsApp or use, you, there are so many out there, can't even count them. And people who want to do uh, inappropriate things will find one that he can hide in it, Snapchat, 10 cents, you name them, whatever it is. If, once you begin to invest time with that opposite sex uh, behind the screen, what you realize is that you spend more and more time because now you have begun to talk about uh, what I refer to as sweet nothings. Oh, you are cute. Oh, you are so nice. Why? Because when this person has a need at work, you are there to help. Could be, it may not be coworker, it could be your, your former classmates. You can expand it to include your, your schoolmates years ago and all of a sudden you reconnected and before you know it you're talking about things this person is sharing with you oh how are you doing how are things it's been years and maybe when you were in school you had a liking uh, to this person <laughs> but things didn't go um, it didn't materialize and now after years you are you've been reconnected and talking about you sharing your life and before you know it talking about oh no um Life hasn't been fair with me. I'm in a relationship that is so terrible. This guy is with this. Before you know it, this individual is sharing um, the frustration, uh, the displeasure that he or she is having in that relationship. And then it starts out as you, by you having pity for that individual, you having compassion, you begin to reach out, you think, what can I do to help? And before you know it, it becomes a trap for you. I will tell you this, sometimes people think that, oh, it's a long distance, nothing can happen. Um, you, if you do not stop it, if you, don't, if you do not look at the warning signs I'm sharing with you here, you will do that to an extent that all that is left between you is to meet face to face. And before you know it, you are fooling around. Some of the things that will lead you to that could be sharing things about you and your spouse with that opposite friend. You begin to talk about how he's treating you, how she's treating you. Oh no, we started out in high school and I wish we were able to, to, to develop this to, because I loved you very much and you loved me very much. I don't know why we parted ways. Begin to talk about that. You, re, you are reigniting the fire again without even knowing, withdrawing from your spouse physically and emotionally. After you spend time, you invest time with this individual behind the screen, either in WhatsApp or whatever it is, you realize that emotionally you are gradually detaching, especially if your relationship is not good. If the one you are in right now, you are not happy. Things are not going the way you expect. You need God to help you. Other than that, you find yourself on this path that emotionally you are detaching yourself. And over time, you physically detach yourself. You don't want to have anything to do with him uh, intimately. Uh, you often look, what happens is then you begin looking for excuses to see or talk with this other individual. You always find reasons to chat. You hide your phone under your pillow. Uh, your wife 
Uh, she better not even look at the phone or your husband. There'll be a fight. What are you looking for? You don't trust me. You're paranoid. What are you looking for in my phone? It's my personal thing. We should have personal boundaries. All of a sudden you are setting boundaries. You're changing password to another every now and then. And you begin to daydream about this individual. You're thinking about, oh boy, this guy sounds so good. This woman, oh boy, I just like to read her texts. Every morning when you wake up and you don't see a text from this individual, your heart is beating so fast because you are emotionally attached. That's how far you've gone. You're doing daydreaming, thinking, hmm, when would that day come when I will see this individual? I tell you, when you get here, you've gone far. Um, just remember what Jesus said. Sharing feelings, problems, and thoughts with your friend instead of your spouse. Now on that same um, social media platform, you're texting, oh no, I didn't sleep last night very well. That guy, now you begin to refer to your, your, your husband as that guy, he, he, was, he wanted to have fun, didn't let me sleep and touching me, pushing me here. I, you're sharing all these things with that individual. You're going so far, uh, too far. Not only that, are you convinced that your friends understand you better than your spouse? If you begin to think that way, watch out. When you are having um, communication, when you're flirting from a distance, it, it looks good, it sounds good. Emotionally, it may feel good, but I'm telling you, it is dangerous. That person is no better than your husband or your wife. It's just that you haven't lived with that, with that person for a month. And so he sounds good, he comes across good on a social media, and before you know it, you are sending all kinds of photos to this individual. The thing is, is there flirting or sexual tension between you and your friend? Ask the question, are you flirting? Why is it that you're sending some um, photos that are very suggestive, suggestive to this individual? Why is it that if you don't hear from that individual, your heart is beating fast, you're getting upset, you're getting frustrated? It is because you have communicated on that social platform so much so that you are emotionally connected. So when you don't hear from that, that individual, you feel bad, you can't breathe, you can't sleep, you, you're twitching and, and, and flexing your muscles and all grinding your teeth and moaning and sighing and all kinds of things. You look for legal ways to touch that individual. What do I mean by legal ways? If it is at a church, a place where, in a situation where you can meet face to face, let's say at a church, do you find a way that when this individual comes to church, you are the one trying to go and take her jacket off her shoulders to go and put it on a closet for her. That is illegal. We all always trying to take a photo with that individual so you can you can hug that individual from the side so tightly. Those are legal ways I'm talking about. You're looking for opportunities to really be closer to this individual. It's dangerous. Do you find yourself paying attention to how you look before you see that particular individual? It's a danger, danger sign. Danger sign. All of a sudden, you go, when you go out, you put the, the, the best perfume on you, you're looking, you're paying particular attention when you are going to meet that individual. Particular attention about your dress, the way you, you act. So you, you, you want to come out the best when you're going to meet that individual. It is a dangerous sign. Is there any secrecy about your relationship? How much time you spend together? What do you, what you do together? What do you talk about? How many times do you spend with that individual on the social media? Compare that with your spouse. If you're going to, if you're doing it too much, watch out. Watch out. It's a danger sign. 20% increase in Facebook users could be linked to 2.18% growth in the divorce rate. And, I, and this is even an old study. Uh, I'm sure more newest uh, um, recent studies will give us more. The institution of marriage already under siege in many quarters seems to be facing yet further assault from people's growing enthrallment with social media. No marriage is a fair proof, my friend. I challenge you today to think about it. No marriage is a, a fair proof. We are all at risk of losing our focus and being swept into an emotional affair. But with God's help, with God's help, 
you can safeguard your marriage. When I say no marriage is a fair proof, uh, uh, and that has been proven in many ways. No, that's why you may have even a, pa a pastor to say, oh, he's a great pastor. He's a spiritual man before you know it. He's down. Why? Because sometimes we let our guards down. We do not set proper boundaries. We think we, uh, I am a spiritual leader. I tell you, when you are a public figure, especially men, you, you get attracted to some women. They look up, some women look for uh, leadership skills in, 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 in men. And when they see somebody who's good in public places, always seeing you, I tell you, sometimes they look, they, they're looking for more than you think. Um, we come across those things sometimes, see somebody smiling with you to you in a very different way. You just say, Lord, help me. That's what you do. So your marriage is not a fair proof unless you have God with you. Let your marriage be your number one priority. Make sure you are working to meet your spouse's most important needs. If you're not sure what those are, ask. Those are the things that come out in your communication, the levels of your communication, all the things that we've covered so far. Spend time loving each other, talking about each other, getting to know each other and know more about each other. Develop and grow together spiritually. Pray with each other and for each other. Not only that, set boundaries about how you will interact with the opposite sex. For instance, you and your spouse may decide that neither of you will be alone with someone of the opposite sex, even for business lunches or late night work, set the boundary. You can set a boundary at, as to uh, what time, how late you will use your cell phone. I will not pick up any calls after 9.30 or 10. I would do not respond to text messages after 10 midnight, I mean 10 p.m. Um, and so set boundaries, appropriate boundaries. You need to have time where you can put away the phone, spend time with each other. Uh, I have come into a situation, actually, I was, <laughs> I was working with a couple and it was interesting. Interestingly, one of them said we're a pastor. Sometimes, you know, on our, um, we, we, while in bed, we just read, we are on our phones and we share, um, we, we text each other romantic stuff. I said, really? But why do you have to go around through the phone when you have each other right there? Talk to each other and put the phone away. Some people, they go to bed with it. It used to be television in the bedroom, but now it's the cell phone next to you. In a little click, pick it up. Let your acquaintances be those who are happily married couples who don't believe in fooling, fooling around. Stay honest. I'm just giving just pointers here. Tips, stay honest with yourself and with your spouse. If you find yourself attracted to someone, admit it quickly to yourself and tell your spouse. <laughs> That's the, the big one. I presented this somewhere. I should say that this is not the first time I presented it. I'm presenting it. And someone said, Pastor, do you, are you sure you want to tell your spouse to get yourself into trouble? If you have nothing to hide, if you have nothing to hide, you, you, you're beginning to see that this person is making advances toward you. And then you feel, oh no. By telling your wife, you just want to guard against what, it, what may be coming next. And so your wife, it's just being transparent. That's what it is. So honesty is the key to preventing a relationship from escalating into a fair. Avoid gatherings and other forms of entertainment that can increase your, your vulnerability to affairs. In other words, avoid gatherings where this person that you are texting, texting now, this pro will provide an opportunity for you to meet frequently. Do yourself a good favor by avoiding that. Seek what will make your spouse happy. One of the ways that you can fend off some of the advances is just anytime this person is coming with something, tell them about your spouse. Oh, my wife, my wife and I, this shirt, my wife got it for me. You know, I love it so much. Really, she knows my tastes. Talk about your wife more. Let this person know that, hey, I love the one I have and I'm happy with that, that individual. 
avoid flirting. You must stop um, footsie from going to party, sitting on the same table and playing with your foot under the, under the table. No, most affairs begin with what's considered innocent flirting, but there's no such thing. Flirting is not part of a friendship. It is not. You can keep your marriage safe from emotional affairs, but it requires openness, honest communication and commitment to do whatever it takes to keep your marriage your number one relationship. Here's what the Bible says. Drink waters out of your own cistern and running waters out of your own well. I tell you, your wife has so much that you have not discovered. Your husband has so much that you have not even been able to. You are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. I often tell couples that you will live with your spouse for 30, 40 years. Don't ever think that you know that individual 100%. You don't. Because certain things bring out certain behaviors, certain things that you, um, even attributes in, uh, that you have not even seen in that individual. When the person is promoted at work, a kind of behavior will begin to emerge that you will never seen when the person experiences a loss in the family, a person who probably was a, a mentor or, or, or an uncle who was so caring, so loving, uh, passes away, it has an indelible impact on that individual. And it will bring something that you've not seen, a kind of behavior, uh, an attitude that you've not seen. And so don't ever think you know your husband um, 100%, probably know your wife about just 70% uh, if you're lucky. So there's more that you can share and appreciate and uh, admire. First Corinthians 7, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. That is your first priority. That is the, he or she is the first person you need to satisfy. Spend that time that you're spending on the social media, Instagram. Why is it that you're always changing photos, throwing new photos on Instagram? Because you know somebody who is always looking at your photos and making, com uh, making comments, some comments, romantic comments towards them. Oh, I love that one I saw there the other day. It makes you feel good. And next time you're changing your profile photo all the time because you know who you are talking to, who you are communicating with, with that action. First Thessalonians 4.4, 4, each of you must know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. And I would say control his own emotions, his own actions, or her own advances uh, in a way that is um, appropriate and in a context of biblical principles. Proverbs 5.18.19, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. This is very, very powerful. To put it into context, spend some time with your wife or your husband. Read the, the book, Songs of Solomon, from chapter one through the last chapter. I challenge you, you will learn a lot. Make it your study. Take chapter one, read it, and then do the best you can to, to, to understand. This is what I tell, um, those who are not theologians, you can get about three, four, five versions of the Bible. Read it in each version. I tell you, you'll come closer to somebody who is using Greek and Hebrew to do some interpretation. You'll come very, very close by reading different versions and comparing the text. The idea will jump out to you. Do that, and your love will grow. You'll say, Pastor, what can I do? I will say, Pray. Pray and pray. If you are going far with social media activities, I pray that God help God will help you to turn around, get back to your spouse. There's more that you can enjoy than to hide behind social media and get yourself into trouble. May God be with us as we reflect on this and your questions and your comments. I'm open for that. We're very quiet today. I did not throw, I intentionally did not throw out any theory or any 
hypothesis or anything. Just wanted to make it just simple. Thank you, Pastor. And I, I should say that you can take the whole idea and um, apply it differently. For somebody, it may not be social media. It could be my business. If your business is becoming the third party in your relationship, think about it. If it is your extended family members are becoming the third party in your relationship, watch out. If church, you know, sometimes even some of us, we spiritualize our roles in the church so much so that it rubs off our relationship. Your comments now, I did my, my talking, so it's your turn to now talk to me. I, again, I don't presume to know everything. We are learning together. So pastor, I have a question. Okay. Well, you just mentioned church, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor. So if you <laughs> mention church, then I am. Um, so how do you balance God first with your relationship? With, um, um, I think it's quite important, Pastor. God first begins at home. <laughs> we say charity begins at home. Uh, we, we, God first is in my heart and in my life and in my family first. Uh, if I don't, if they are not my first priority by having God uh, in the family circle, I, my projection uh, at God or spirituality will be just superficial. So God, the balance is that I, uh, I think it was uh, um, Joshua who said that uh, me and my house, right? <laughs> we will serve the Lord, right? Okay. And so God first means that my, my relationship with God, because my um, horizontal relationship should be the priority to then impact my vertical relationship. And so God first, God first means that I have a personal deep relationship with God, even as a pastor, as a pastor. If I don't have that relationship, let me say, put it this way, you cannot give what you don't have. Nothing happens through you until it happens to you. Did I make sense, Pastor? <laughs> uh, yes, you do. Um, but I have a follow-on question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, somebody was giving a personal testimony. He said that, um, well, um, my partner doesn't really take God seriously. You know, he doesn't or she doesn't really want to be part of um, God's family. And when I'm about to go to church, when I'm ready, that's when he says he demands or he, she demands that I want this. I want you to do this for me. And I want you to do that for me. Uh, so how do you react or respond in such cases you know, when somebody sees that, you know, this is the time that you want to have with your church family and that's the time that they also want to um, spend with you? Okay. Here's how I look at it. If what you are learning at church is not put into practice at home, I will say watch, watch out. Because if I'm going to church, and sometimes it requires patience uh, to be able to win over your spouse who is even an unbeliever. And so if I'm learning at church about respect, appreciation, patience, honor, you know, and I can add many other things that we learn at church, and I cannot apply those virtues in my relationship with my spouse, then it becomes a problem. What I mean by that is I, I've, I've seen situations where, similar to what you described, um, and it was a lady, lady who says, Pastor, my husband is of another faith persuasion. And he'll wait until when I'm going to church and he, he will ask me for fufu. And it takes a long time to make fufu, <laughs> as you know it. And that's when he wants to eat um, this type of meal that takes a long time to prepare. 
And for me, I think he just wants to do that to disrupt my time to go to church. And so I told her, why don't you, even if it's a test, you are learning to work in harmony at church, right? Would you take your time and prepare that meal for him without fighting? Every time he asks that, just be patient and go through that and see what it can do. And so I shared a story about a woman, a pastor, you know her, she passed away about three, two years, two and a half years ago, unfortunately. And she would tell me, pastor, my husband brought me to the church. See, I followed my husband, not brought me. He said, my husband tried for the first 20 years in our marriage. I would not even, I don't, didn't want to have anything to do with Adventism. And I made sure I irritated him on the Sabbath morning. But this guy would be so patient. Sometimes he will stop going to church, stay home with me, and then put up with my nonsense. Now the woman talking to me, put up with all my nonsense. And so after a time, I asked myself, what kind of person is this? There must be something good at that church. I should stop fighting it. And so eventually she became a member and now she became um, an activist, <laughs> preaching to women whose spouses or people whose spouses are not members. And, and then she will share this testimony that look, I did all I could to hurt this guy to, dis to disrupt his Sabbath worship services. But God used this man to touch my heart. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that if we're talking about patience, love, care, forgiveness, and this husband or wife of mine wants to use that knowing that that is where it hurts the most, can I also pray for God to give me that patience to be able to apply it at home? That is what I mean by if I, God is not coming into my family, if I'm not balancing that act, that what I'm doing at church should be seen in my home, in my community, and in my work, in all the relationships I have. So that's what I mean by that. I'm not saying forsake everything just for that, because you also, we need a, a, a community environment to grow. And so that is also very important. I see, Brother Jean's hand here. Pastor, did I help? Uh, yes, you did. Um, I was going to say, is there a limit? Is there something that you really shouldn't do? I mean, that. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, if, it is, if it is taking you away from anything against scripture, mm -hmm. that is where I would draw the line. Okay. That's where I would draw the line. Yeah. Thank you. My <laughs> husband, my, my wife wants me to use our funds to go gambling. <laughs> Uh, go do something that is strictly against scripture. Yes, then I will take a stand. Thank yes, you. Uh, yeah. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, all of this actually um requires the grace of God because my friend was having such a problem where the wife will ask him to do exactly the same things before he can go to, 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 to the Sabbath. But the, the man uh, decided to do it for one year, for two years, but after two years, the man said, okay, now I have to be serious. When it comes to the business of God, I have to be serious. Mm -hmm. well, see, I have a time for you for six days. Please, you can <laughs> ask me whatever you want. I can do it. But please, this day I have reserved it to God. Please listen to me. Mm -hmm. Then this man started to go without considering his wife's request. Mm -hmm. But after some time, the wife said, But why this man is so serious? Maybe something is there, something special is there. Then the wife told him, Okay, today I want to go with you. Okay. And <laughs> And after some times, she became an Adventist and she's now actually even a deacon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yes. You see, when we say balance, 
or when I say practice your what you are learning at church uh, in your home, it does not mean you this person is going to walk over you mm-hmm. and trample upon your Christian principles. Uh, you you are going to let the person know in love and in patience. That's all I'm trying to say: in love and in patience. And 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 there, there, there comes a time where it crosses the line to become even an abuse, <laughs> you know. And in that way, yeah, I mentioned the other time that you push back in a very kind, loving way. Um, I was in a situation, it wasn't a church. I was in a situation where a good, I considered him a friend at the time, was taking advantage of me uh, in several fronts. And so it came a time when I, he wanted me to do something for him, which was one, illegal. Two, it can put me in a very, in, in, in danger, could go into prison. Mm-hmm. It's to falsify um, identity. And I had to tell the friend, I can do many things for you, but I'm sorry. I love you so much that I cannot do this particular thing for you. And, and that is what I'm talking about. You, you, as a pastor, let me tell you, we're going off tangent here, but as a pastor, some people will come to me and say, can you write a letter for me that I have been a church member? Sometimes they need a character reference. Can you write a letter for me that I've been a church member for 10 years in this particular church? When I know that you have not been a member for 10 years, I don't beat about a bush. I just tell you, from, I, I really, if it is a work promotion, I really pray that you be promoted. Um, unfortunately, I cannot write such a letter for you. You see, when we are straightforward, people will know you. You know, sometimes what we do is we try to be nice and we don't know when to say no and these kinds of things. And then people will take advantage of that. Pastor, I see your hand again. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Back to the topic. Um, Pastor, so. Um, I live in the same house with my wife. You know, we share the same bed. Why would I invest my time with another person? Why would I have a friend? Why would I pay attention to somebody else? What are the underlying reasons why these things happen? Uh, I I like to open up for all of us to discuss here. I know you're looking at your time, Pastor. Um, I will throw one one down, and then I like you. I like to hear from you. Insecurity can play a major role. If you feel insecure in your relationship, it can cause you to look for other ways to feel good. Mm-hmm. What else? <laughs> good evening. Yes. <laughs> good evening. Yes. Good yeah. Good evening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Um. From the Gambia. Mm-hmm. And. Um, because of uh, the time difference, I couldn't join because the first day it was 7.30. The person that I invited us could and uh, 7.30 here. It was when I joined, you, uh, you've already uh, finished the program. Then later the person put 6.30, 6.30 in the Gambia. That's UK, the person put UK time. So UK time is 6.30, but ours here is 5.30. So. That was the day, I think day before yesterday I joined, but you have already finished the discussion. Um, that's just by the way. Um, uh, a person just asked about being the, with, with the wife, that why would he have time for maybe another person? And I want to just uh, say this, that there are times that uh, um, a friend can be going through emotional problems and uh, being a close person to you, the person might share his or her problem, especially let me use her problem because um, we all know as Adventists that we do this and uh, end it now. And we see so many uh, problems that do uh, come up when um, maybe a spouse will be um, treating uh, the other one. And um, when someone like that uh, confided in you, that this is the problem I'm going through. And um, you try because you are with your wife and you try not to maybe raise any doubt or 
or uh, some other thing so that your wife might not get jealous, you try to shun that person or you try not to really come into help, it might, it might not be good. But what I want to say, when someone like that has a problem and maybe open up to you, the right thing is to ask the person that as you know, I'm married, I want uh, myself and my wife to, um, to cancel you, to, to help you in this situation. Even maybe the person need more than canceling. But the right thing is for you to allow your uh, spouse to know about it and both of you try to help um, the person. Because there are times that the person will be in that relationship and it might end up in that and because the person will just be there, uh, it will be okay, people will talk to my husband and the husband will continue to molest or maybe to, to, um, to harass and maybe it's, we've learned about so many that led to, to death. So something like this, being with your wife, yes, but if you have someone that has maybe opened up to you, let your spouse know so that both of you will, uh, will know what uh, and how to end. That is what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good. I think there was another person who wanted to talk at the same time. Yeah, I, I would jump in. I saw someone else before me, but I think also with the pastor's question is uh, one of the reasons why I think it all boils down to uh, lack of faith and trust. But I wouldn't be talking in my partner about lack of faith and trust in God. Because when you understand the role of the... Um, marriage why marriage was actually there it was that the work of god could be put forward and we know when we find ourselves in difficult positions where as if we find ourselves wanting to be with someone else other than our spouse um we know that that would really hinder the work of god because that's exactly what the marriage is actually therefore that the work of God will be able to go forward and as one unit, as God has set it out. So I think faith and trust in God could be also one of the reasons why these things might occur. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I also want to respond briefly uh, one of the reasons why people can, uh, in spite of their partner being there, uh, begin to have such uh, intimate communication with uh, opposite sex, which they are hiding. It could also be that uh, they are looking for sympathy. Mm. They are looking for somebody who, who can understand their plight. Uh, so they, they now confide with uh, you know someone else instead of their partner. Thank you. So Thank Pastor, you. maybe I should ask another question if it, if that is okay. Mm -hmm. So if your <laughs> partner um, is talking to someone else, and um, what would be the best approach to? try and solve the problem. Do you confront the person? Do you confront <laughs> your spouse? Do you, <laughs> what do you do? I think some people have done the, the, the first uh, statement. Some people felt the best way is to push back and confront the other person. I, I, it would be good to work with your spouse to seek to identify what is causing this. Nobody leaves home to go outside when there's peace, there's love, there's appreciation, there's kindness. And so um, you will be better off trying to identify, engage, talk with that person. Uh, in a non-threatening way, okay. non-accusative way, 
um, not when you are angry. Well, spend some time to, to really engage that individual because there might be some undercurrent uh, underlying issues that are precipitating uh, these actions and you, you, you approach it with love. Let me share this with you if it is appropriate. Uh, um, I worked with a couple, this is probably 15 years now. And um, they were having a lot of challenges, all because um, something like this started happening. And the spouse had a, a boyfriend before she got married and now was going back to the boyfriend. And so actually it, it appeared that they did not sever the relationship completely and got married. And so they kept texting and all kinds of things. And so it got to a point where this guy couldn't even um, handle, and he knew because he, he paid for the phone and, and, and very quickly he found some ways to, to tag the phone <laughs> to the point that he was recording their conversation when he would go to work. He's sitting on the phone and having to sweet nothing. So he recorded all the conversations and then um, attempted to, uh, uh, to work with the, the, the wife. And initially it, did, it wasn't working because they would, she would fight back and all that. And so that's why uh, they came to me. They came to me. So I, I went and went in and I worked with them, talked to them to approach this, um, not with anger. And, and the gentleman did something that really I appreciated. He said, look, in one of our conversations, he looked at his wife and he said, look, I know all these, I've listened to all your conversations, talking about what he could do to help you, this, 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 and that. I do not want to use that against you. Is there anything with me that doesn't make you happy? Mm. I'd like to know because I love you, even though I know this deep conversations and all that. He's your former boyfriend. I, I, I get it. I want to build this relationship. Help me to know if there's any weakness, anything that I am lacking, I am willing to learn. And, and I was really touched to tell you, and, and to the glory of God, they are still living today. They have two beautiful, um, well, one is to young, become a young adult now, um, about 15 or 16, yeah. And a girl coming and they still live, they, they're now a strong couple. And so, as I said, there may be something um, maybe the former boyfriend was talking sweet nothings, <laughs> trying to convince this woman. But this guy didn't use that. Oh, go, forget about it. No, came down and said, "Yes, I see all that. Yeah. You're flirting and all that. But is there anything that I can do to make you?" I saw your hand. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a question. So how do you do with a, a partner that is extremely jealous? For no reason is just jealous. When a woman calls a woman is problem. A man called your phone is problem. Your phone rings, every, anything, every time is jealous, always suspicious. How do you that, handle? That, that one is, is a different problem. <laughs> so really it's not about, if it is everybody, your boss calls you, he's upset, every, that's a different Extremely problem. Extremely jealous, yeah. The root, the root of some of those things, uh, unfortunately, are insecurity. Uh, um, but then I, I can throw, I, I keep saying that, but also, could it be that something has happened before? <laughs> That's something to also to explore. You know, has something bef happened before? Uh, maybe this spouse, I know what has happened before and I forgave. And now I see the trend building up again. And so I am just trying to guard against, but I come across as being jealous. Could it be, or I feel insecure that maybe I don't have what it, what it takes to make this thing work. And I'm afraid that somebody might convince or take this person away. Could it be? So usually there's an underlying situation that's happening. And also we shouldn't forget that to one week, you cannot touch everything in one week. We shouldn't forget that some of us, we have um, um, 
predisposed um, behaviors or some things in our past when we we're growing up that we couldn't we didn't deal with it with them and sometimes they put us in a, in a, in a situation where we are fearful uh, we are insecure we are out of balance in life in general so it's not about about my spouse um, I, I, I have warped um, realities uh, that I have embraced. And these are all causing me to do certain things. Um, yesterday I talked about mental health. Yeah, there are mental challenges that sometimes will, 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 will hurt somebody or will cause somebody to do certain things that we might not even know. But sometimes we will say, oh, he's aggressive or she's aggressive or he's this. There may be uh, some underlying issues that were not dealt with properly that are causing these things. So that is beyond flirting on social media that we're talking about. It's really a pathological issue that needs to be dealt with. So, so Pastor, um, thank you for the answer. I also wanted to say that um, sometimes it's also how we began the relationship. Yeah. Now, if, yeah. if we began the relationship, you no, know, if we you know, like if we began as um, showing the other person or myself to be very easy in, in that way, then uh, the person will be jealous. You know, they, they, they will think that's how you will approach everybody else. So the way we begin a relationship is also very important. But I wanted to ask you, um, uh, of course, the, the time is up, but I wanted to quickly ask um, the couple you talked about. Mm -hmm. So they are still married. Is it because the man accepted that this lady is always going to have this friend? Or is it because... Um... Okay. <laughs> no, the man, the man, <laughs> as we worked with them, like I said, the man wanted to know her needs and okay. her concerns and then see how best he can meet those needs. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, at, at, during our closing sessions, the sessions leading up to um, our meetings, he made sure that uh, his wife severed the relationship with the former boyfriend. Oh yeah, he said, I'll do my best. But then I will also need, um, I need, I need to have a condition here. I cannot try to do that when he's sitting on the side trying to convince you all the time. He knows you're married. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how things didn't work out with, with you and him, <laughs> but I, I want to see that um, that communication is broken and I will do my best. Give me a chance. <laughs> yeah, it's not that keep on with that and I'll do my best. Uh, you have competing interests. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Yes. Um, um, uh -huh. Brother David. Yes, sorry. Um, I have a, a question and uh, it's related to a, an experience that, uh, not my personal experience that is uh, somehow is still ongoing. Um, I wanted to get clarific some uh, yeah, a clarification from Pastor. Um, this, is, this, this is like a, situ it's a situation where somebody is getting help from a woman. This woman is going out of her way to help the young man. The young man is struggling in terms of uh, finding his, his feet. And this woman was very willing to provide the necessary assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the, 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 the young man is also married, has children, mm -hmm. But uh, this woman feels is doing it like a good, you know, like a person who is really out to help him to stand on his own. Mm -hmm. But uh, in course of the help, the woman will now they need to talk because this one is in the U.S. This one is in Africa. Mm -hmm. They have to talk and communicate. So sometimes the wife is feeling that this communication is is becoming is a lot you know they're always talking on the phone and is she's getting not being comfortable with it mm -hmm. but they 
the family of the young man is happy they are, they are they are telling the wife no don't worry because this woman is rendering the help we can't even uh, you know this woman is providing help that our son needs for example and so the situation is a bit you know difficult so what would you suggest to these two couples who are uh, being impacted by this whole situation now who so the one who is helping it is beginning to impact her marriage mm -hmm. yeah that's just a sign so to see the, 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 the one who is helping the, the wife mm -hmm. is feeling that the time they spend discussing on the phone over yeah. the whole issue, preparing the papers and uh, helping to yeah. work things out so that he can get opportunity to go abroad, mm -hmm. is the wife is not comfortable with that. Even though they, they, I mean, they feel that everything is just being done on a very plain help. I mean, the woman is rendering just a plain help. That is. Yeah. Um, you, you remember in, during the presentation, I talked about emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, and, and, and I also said that every relationship, even affair, begins with being casual friends or yeah. you know, them to help somebody. Usually, mm -hmm. that's how they start. Kindness. The moment your spouse begins to, to not be comfortable, um, question I'll ask is, is there transparency? Okay. Why is when you're talking to that individual, genuinely, you just want to help? I don't put the phone in, in, in the speaker phone, but all of you are listening. Yeah, well, what is happening? You say help. Why don't you make it a help from both instead of one? Now that is becoming an issue so that um, you know exactly what is happening. Uh, let me use my own example. It may be different because you're talking about Africa and here, because I mentioned that sometimes you feel, oh, there's, there's a gap between us. It's, once you are emotionally attached, it's just a matter of proximity. Um, I'm, I'm I'll share the story with you. A good friend of mine, um, he, he got stroke, a pastor. And very, very good friend. We've been friends for, for probably about 30 years. And then more so he was my associate. Okay. I'm being vulnerable here. And so it, he came to the city because of me, came to this uh, general area. Uh, we've been friends, my wife and, and, and he and his wife. And then he got stroke. Um, not, not, didn't know many people who could help so the wife. And because we are that close, um, fell on asking me to help. So I would give her a ride here and there, helped her to set up um, the payments they used to make, all kinds of things, mortgage, you name it. Then I was giving her a ride to work. I picked her up. She worked second shift, 3 to 11 p.m. Okay. And so I will pick her up, drop her to, sometimes I'll drop her off, sometimes I'll pick her up. And then over time, my wife didn't complain. Usually she knows I'm going to pick up my friend's wife at work. But then it dawned on me. And look, I'm a pastor. The Bible says avoid appearance of evil. Mm, okay. mm. And so I started thinking, my wife knows about it. Sometimes she'll go with me. Sometimes she also is a nurse. And sometimes she'll get up 6 a.m. to get go to work. So she may not be able to go with me. The, the problem for me was, if anybody meets me, Coming with my friend's wife, we two alone in a car, almost 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. And the person takes a camera and snaps a photo. Would I be there to explain why and what happened and why I'm giving that right? Mm -hmm. Or be, be, uh, anybody begins a rumor. I met Pastor Amor, not one time. I've met them, he and this woman, almost 12 midnight. And so I thought about it very quickly. And, and because she doesn't, she, she drives, but will not drive on a highway. She doesn't go far. So finally, I told her, I said, look, you need to do something here for your own good, for my own good. I need to stop picking you up after work. 
for us in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. You can take a taxi, you can take an Uber, or find somebody who can help you. But for me, I will help you. I'm, we are still here, my wife and I will help you. But to pick you up after midnight, mm -hmm. let's start it off. For my own sake, for your own sake. And she, she understood. I mean, right there, I cut it off. Mm. After that, only once that there was no storm that she said, Pastor, I've tried, I'm not, I can't even get Wuba. So I, I, my wife and I went and picked her up. So it wasn't just me, my wife and I went and picked her up, dropped her home. And so these are some of the boundaries I'm talking about. So I would say that for that situation, if indeed genuinely it's a help and it's beginning to create a problem, involve, mm. involve. Even when, when it gets there, remember, it may not have started with the, the wife involved. So even now, when you bring her in, it may not be easy for her. She might think, what about the times I'm not around? <laughs> you mm -hmm. see? Okay, yeah. what about the times I'm not available? Do you know what you were talking about? And so it becomes very challenging in a situation like that. If then we can allow somebody to do that help. In, my, in that, what you're describing is unique. In my case, anybody else can give a ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Any other church member can also volunteer to help. Um, mm -hmm. It's their pastor. And so, uh, pastor who got stroke. So, uh, the, the situation is incongruent to compare. At the same time, I think the basic principle is openness and honesty yeah. and allowing transparency. And I believe it will, it will help uh, mitigate the stress uh, that is building up. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, if I can let somebody, because again, it builds loyalty too. You know, anytime you help somebody, um, it builds loyalty. And sometimes, sometimes um, the built in effects can also create a problem. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pastor. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Pastor. I think we are over time. Yes. <laughs> we uh, stop and then. We'll be blessed by your, your prayer for the benediction, you. and then we can disperse. Thank you very much. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we have discussed a very sensitive issue this afternoon because we all carry cell phones and we use it for things that are also very important. Sometimes we can even work from our cell phones. Mm. And so cell phone in itself may not be bad, but the devil uses every avenue he can find to entice, to confuse, to drag us, and to lure us and lead us into temptation. And we pray that, Lord, where we are weak, we ask for you, the power of your Holy Spirit to give us strength and power to overcome and be able to work with you and with our spouses in our relationships. I pray for each and every one here today that if there be anyone who is struggling with social media uh, creating a, new, a problem in his or her relationship, I pray that you will be with that individual. Sometimes the devil will use uh, the idea of help to gradually lead us into a place that we did not even anticipate. And so I pray that we will be constantly guarded by your Holy Spirit that the promptings of your spirit will be with us. Bless us in our relationships and help us to love you more. And it is in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor, uh, for uh, the wonderful seminar we had today. And I pray that God will continue to bless you and continue to provide his wisdom. Uh, tomorrow we have, uh, again, um, one seminar. And on Saturday, we have and been trusting someone. And I would like to invite each one of you. You will be the same, but uh, Dr. Amoa, you will be the same for the preacher, the someone. Please come. But tomorrow, we have an, another interesting uh, seminar. Please come from 7.30. Be on time. Pastor, do you want to remind us what we are going to, to have tomorrow? Or it is?
you are muted faster. You are muted. Yeah, um, it was going to be, I was going to talk about the ribbon, the red buttons. Mm -hmm. But I am thinking that uh, through the other presentations I've touched on that. And so I will replace that with another presentation. Okay, okay, thank you, Pastor. I just want you to be curious. So you want to come <laughs> Okay, that's very nice. <laughs> Okay, so may God bless you, everybody. I meet you tomorrow, and may God bless you and have a blessed night or blessed day if you are on the daytime. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.